What's up, everybody? This is episode 21 on the Neutral Air Show. Got my man Alex in the building. How you doing, man? I'm doing all right. Yeah, man. The first question I want to ask you is like, where's like, what's your origin story? Like, where'd you begin? How'd you even get into Smash? Like, what's what's the background of you, man? Oh, well, that's pretty easy. I was uh, I was wrapped up in the hype of MLG mm -hmm. way back in the day, 2003, like that Jesus. era. Okay. And uh, when I saw MLG and like that, like the first kind of like pro gaming mm -hmm. thing yep. uh a bunch of tournaments started spreading like that's what started everything was mm -hmm. basically uh um mlg and i started doing halo 2 2v2 tournaments and okay. melee singles so 1v1 tournaments out of a uh uh like a like a net cafe like i don't know mm -hmm. what, what do you call it? internet cafe yeah yeah, yeah. yeah yeah i so i i would host like little ones of there and okay. like back in the day the melee people who would come to my tournaments like most of them don't play anymore but uh some like melee people might remember like like dope like okay. a falco one of the best Falco one of the best falco mains in michigan used mm -hmm. to come to those uh jv who made the jv yeah, four yeah, stock yeah like that guy like when you say jv four stock it's like he's the guy who did that oh okay so he like he used to come to those weeklies and um like just a lot of history because like for the longest time we just used smash boards mm -hmm. and our thread, the Michigan discussion topic, was always, like, the longest, biggest, oldest thread. So yeah. we have, like, <laughs> all of this history of Smash in Michigan. So it all started from MLG, and then I never really left the local level or, like, took it very seriously until Brawl. Okay. When I started doing a lot of tournaments from 2008 to mid-2009. Mm -hmm. And then um, during that time, I worked with I, – I, I hung out with people like Lane – Okay. Um, let's see, Samurai Panda. I'm trying to see who else from that time was still around and relevant, so people would know. Um, but the number one thing that I think people remember me for is I'm the one who popularized the uh, King DDD Standing Infinite. Okay. Okay. So that's still my <laughs> crowning gaming achievement. Is on the Brawl official MLG rules. Mm -hmm. They it, they're at the very bottom of the rules page. It said banned techniques, and it was just a link to my video tutorial on how to do it. Gotcha. There was no Jesus. text whatsoever. <laughs> it was just banned techniques, link to my thing, and I, and it was pretty crazy. To uh, in what two thousand eight, two thousand nine, like mm -hmm. to have over a hundred thousand views on a YouTube video, yeah, but let's go. like it's it just blew up because. This is like still my crowning gaming achievement. So a lot of people credit me with a lot of the early development of DDD as a character. Mm -hmm. But um, I went to Japan in 2009, and I stayed there for five years, so I sort of just dropped off. Uh, I came back really? in okay. 2014, and people were like, hey, I remember you from Brawl. You're going to do Smash 4. Uh, some of the people I remember from the community were still around. And then I just started leveling up every year mm -hmm. since 2014 when it started, and now we're here at Frostbite. We're... Dude, this is a great crazy event. I wish I wish I came last year, man. But I went to a different tournament. But mm -hmm. I wish I would came. Dude, dude, I was watching it. I was, I was watching the stream while venturing at another event, bro. Watching the hype on my phone, like, oh, let's go. <laughs> yeah, I so, mean, nobody nobody knew, on the grand scale of things, what was about to happen. I had an idea of what was about to happen mm -hmm. because I had lived in Japan in 2016 for six months. Yeah. So I handpicked the people that we brought over from Japan, knowing that they. Would, had a unique play style or played a unique character that nobody in America had ever seen before. Yeah. So I knew that something crazy was going to happen. I didn't know it was specifically going to be Tsu, but, like, I, I sort of figured Shoe Tone was a shoe in for top eight. I'm glad Still May got ninth, Kami May got ninth. Like, a lot of the picks that we did, like, did exactly what I thought they were going to do, which is, nice. like, create big upsets and storylines. Oh, and all yeah, that, so. man. It was a great, man. It was a great experience to watch. We got lucky. We got lucky. Because like, all... all like T, for example, busted out in pools. Yeah. And all the Japanese players could have went 0-2 or, like, you know, not made it to round two pools, and it would have been a normal bracket, and nobody would be here, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I so I, we, we, we got a little bit lucky. Sometimes a tournament storyline is important. So when I designed this event with, like, the low-tier hero award, worldwide legend, and, like, just, like, focus on underrepresented characters, underrepresented regions, and just sort of, like, try to breathe new life mm -hmm. into the scene. Yeah. Because it's, it's no mistake that, like, everybody – who came to Frostbite 2017 immediately got flown out to dozens of other events throughout the year. Yeah, yeah, You know, yeah, Tsu yeah. was at everything. Effect, yeah. Kirihara was at everything. You know, Ken was at everything. Like, all these people that came to Frostbite automatically then became part of the scene. So yeah. I like to think of Frostbite as, like, that place where, like, you get to break out tournaments. So then after you have a breakout tournament here, then for the rest of the year, everybody wants you at your event. 
you know, yeah, but it all starts here. And like, that's the marketing that we have and like the storyline we have going in. And I feel like that's like, we try to design the event around hopefully things like that happen. When you encourage underrepresented characters to come and you encourage people from regions to come through like the different ways that we have, mm -hmm. Like, you're going to create upsets, and I know top players don't like the inconsistency of Smash 4, but yeah, it does yeah, create yeah. storylines, and, like, oh, Frostbite definitely. has the storyline of this is where you have your breakout tournament. Like, people who perform at Frostbites have become PGR people. Like, for example, nice, nice. Ned's first big victories, um, like, against PGR players was at Frostbite 2016, and then he was PGR'd later. Then you, if you go to Frostbite 2017, obviously you have all the Japanese players. You have Sue, you have Ken, you have Chudihara all making it on there. Shuto making it on who, there. Who's the, who's the Link player? Link T. T, T oh, was yeah, on there. Yeah, man. And then you also have, uh, a lot of people don't know, but that was Mistake's first major. Really? Frostbite 2017 was. He was playing ZSS at the time. Okay. But that was his first major. Um, Myron uh, did really well at that event. Uh, reverse 3 0 Tweak. And that later solidified his season going forward to be on the PGR. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a lot of people who had breakout tournaments at Frostbites. Yeah, that, it like, sounds like a great storyline, man. Right. Like, well, so, like, I feel like if you're an event organizer, like, you should definitely should try to create these kind of things going forward. Mm -hmm. It's really important to, like, find a way when you're – because at the end of the day, we're putting on a show. We have a full production, like, broadcast quality equipment back there. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're running a TV show or essentially a reality show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you have a reality show, you can't control what happens. You don't write the script. What happens, happens. Exactly. But you can put certain things together yeah. to sort of cultivate what you want anyway. Yeah, yeah, I got So it. by bringing in all these people that are new and untested and, like, making that – and with Smash 4 being so prone to upsets, they're bound to happen. You don't know where they're going to come from, but you just create that environment where that storyline can be actually made. Okay. You know, it's possible that, you know, Mistake, Tweak, Salem, like all these players will come in here and just beat everybody as seated and it'll be a like, completely normal tournament. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we, we try to put our resources in certain places and design the event around this idea that hopefully we have this new blood of Smash 4 and we're able to, like talk about it which is why we have like interview podiums and stuff set up oh yeah definitely like just in case the big upsets happen again so people get to know who these people are and you get to oh, know the yeah. personalities like we at frostbite because we have all these singles and like all these new people that we want to focus on we don't stream almost any doubles until like the finals basically like there's almost no doubles pulls streamed at all it's just all focused on singles all on the individual characters and players I like from that. all these different I like players that a lot. like in order to sort of do it so we designed this event around multiple different things to make sure that it's interesting for everybody at home. Like I said, we're making a reality TV show. Gotcha. So did you expect from 2017, 2018, the, the number of in Absolutely not. No? So I'll, I'll be... Like, 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 like there, there was what, 342? Like, something them? like that. Some of that? And with spectators like, what, or whatever, what, what, we're probably over 400, but... What did you like, expect, like... Like, oh, we I, told know, the venue, I know I'm going to make an event for 2018. Like, our I'm first like hotel block something. sold out in the less than the first week. Mm -hmm. And uh, we originally had a hotel block of 30 rooms. So that gives you an idea of how many people we actually thought were going to be here. <laughs> we oh, thought yeah. we were going to get 500. You know, we thought we were going to get an increase. Yeah. But not quite nearly triple. Yeah, triple. So not triple, I guess. I mean, that's that's, that's great like, growth, man. I like like. I guess it is nearly triple. Yeah. There's like a couple of weeks that went past 2017. I'm like, dude, I don't know why I didn't go to the Frostbite. Like I, I think like, everybody I, said that. I'm pretty sure everybody said that. But honestly, I think that that just goes to the genius of my staff and my production team. They run a really good event mm -hmm. and they put on a very good show the camera angles were specific to make sure that the event looked as good as possible because if i'm being completely honest like that venue wasn't very great it was very cramped things were not very ideal there was like the stage was super tiny mm -hmm. but the way that we framed the cameras and whatnot did not show you that yeah like and if you think i'm lying go see unrivaled's channel and like see their matches the, the way that it's framed it looks amazing and if you look at Gucci and you see those wide shots where he has the crowd you can see what frostbite was really like like that was a hard tournament to to it was a hard tournament to be at like there was just so many moving pieces and like the venue space had a main ballroom but it also had 
um, various different events and things yeah, yeah. in various conference rooms all the way down this long hallway. So it was constantly back and forth going all over the place. So it wasn't ideal. I'm glad we have this space, which is great. Oh, this is an excellent space. Where man. we have like all the main space all in one area. And we don't have the side events in a separate room. Everything's in the same room. It's all 24 hours. Like I it's, it's definitely what room, yeah. if we had the ability to do last year, because it's it's almost the same concept mm -hmm. as far as like how we wanted it. It's just we have the space and the ability to make it actually look decent. So, oh, one thing that I've been saying like for um, maybe like the last like four or five months is when people come to majors, like especially like a casual player or something like that, right? They're like, oh, I want to experience it. They go to, it's like, oh, what else is for me? And what I've been saying is, like, a lot of majors, what they need to start doing is running some type of, like, because I have, like, I have a magic background. Mm -hmm. and me too. Yeah, I have, like, I don't know, 14 That's where the on-demand yeah, side events come from, yeah, by the way. Yeah, so, like, GPs. when the minute I was I read, like, your post about, like, oh, running, like, eight-man, um, uh, something like. Single similar, elimination brackets. Yeah, single elimination bracket. I'm like, dude, I've been saying this forever. But I how stole come it. more people. Yeah, I stole it. The Low Tier Hero Award actually comes from Eternal Weekend. Okay. Are you familiar with yeah, the yeah. tournament? Oh, yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the biggest, yeah, yeah. yeah, the biggest vintage and legacy tournament in Philadelphia yeah. every year. Yeah. So what they have in the vintage tournament is if you don't use the Power Nine or Bazaar or any of the expensive restricted cards. Yeah. Like, or it's not even restricted cards. It's like because you can uh, bazaars, um, let's see, uh, workshops, all the Power Nine, like the really expensive yeah, 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 cards. Yeah, yeah. If you limit yourself by not using those, the highest placing deck in vintage. Yeah at that tournament gets its own payout. Yeah. Which is where I got the little Yeah, corresponding the person who plays right. X amount of character. The, the X right. character. Yeah, right. exactly. So yeah. basically what it is is by going through the bracket on a challenge mode, if you will, yeah. you get the chance to get rewarded. Yeah. That's also ripped directly from Magic. I stole that from Eternal Weekend and localized it to Smash. That's fine. Yeah, so fun. that started in 2016. Then 2017, we did the on-demand side events, which is also ripped from Smash. 2018's thing that I stole from a GP is the Guests of Honor. We have Artists of Honor. Mm -hmm. Kind of like if you go to a GP in Magic, you know, you'll have, like, the yeah, yeah. the artist who, like, drew the, drew the cards or whatever. And mm -hmm. then, like, this GP specifically has this one famous whatever, like, card. And you can go there and you can meet them. You can get stuff signed. You can buy their merch or whatever. Yep. That's where this came from. Yeah, yeah. So that's who knows what next yeah, year will be. Yeah, especially I'm gonna like, look for yeah. like magic tournaments and GPs and be like, hmm, what am I doing for 2019? <laughs> yeah, I just I just love the like the eight man or like 16 man brackets like simulation like pay go sign up they shoot it like you win like small prize or whatever just like even if it's you know like when you say like one dollar two dollar three dollar it, it doesn't matter it's just like even when you pay that one dollar it's still like oh I feel like I'm in a tournament experience like it, it doesn't even matter like and then giving like a small prize to so, like the casual player like. Oh, I have something else if I go to, like, this is something I can right. look forward to. And not have to, like, drain, like, all my money. Because, like, when, when someone travels, like, I came from Connecticut, it takes a lot of money to come out to, like, you know, Midwest or something. You know, you got your plane ticket, your gas or whatever. Right. Like, it's just, it's a lot. So, like, right. when you have something like this, like, it's something, like, small for them, if they go to, it's, like, fucking amazing. So, so that's what, like, I, that's what I love. And well, a lot of majors need to start doing that, and they're not doing it. You, you as a magic player understand yes. the term value. Yes, I love value. value. Yes, you must love value. Yes, I love value, bro. <laughs> this is, so, here's the thing: when you go to a magic GP, it's all mm -hmm. about value. So yeah. there's no venue fee at magic GPs. What you get is you get like a swag bag with like deck boxes, card sleeves, play mats, and promotional cards you can only get at that event, right? Mm -hmm. So, depending on the promotional card, depending on the art of the play mat and the deck boxes and whatnot, those have immediate value. So you spend fifty bucks to get in the main event. You know, you get to sell that play mat for 12 bucks. You get to sell that card for 20 bucks or whatever. You already made almost all your money back. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, like, you're paying $50, but you're getting value. Exactly. You know? Yep. So, same thing with they have their on-demand side events at GPs. That's if you scrub out of the main event, now I can grind my value back mm -hmm. by entering these side events, entering these drafts, opening packs, winning prizes, just playing infinite. So that way you're getting more cards. And then they have the vendors there where you can then take the cards that you won from all those side events that you granted, turn them into actual cash yeah. so because like, you sell yeah, those so cards. almost break even basically. Right. Yeah. There's no way to do that in a Smash tournament until here. Mm -hmm. Now, unfortunately, Smash players don't buy as much stuff as Magic players. Like, there's no collectible card market. There's yeah, no yeah. secondary market. There isn't really that, like, buying and selling that you see in Magic. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to, like, retain that value. Mm -hmm. But what we do have is money, mat co money match culture. Now, I hate money matches. I hate them. They're, it drives me insane, especially with, like, Smash when you have, like, little kids and whatnot. Because you, you'll have parents who are, like, really mad that yeah. they're 
son or daughter got really taken advantage of and they lost $1 or $5 or maybe even more mm -hmm. to some adult who just whooped them and smashed. It's like, yeah, put money on it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, that doesn't happen all the time. Like, most people are respectful, but it yeah, has yeah. happened. Yeah, it has, so yeah. I'm all about accident prevention. Anyway, the whole point is we have money match culture be built deep into us. Okay. So utilizing that, here's a dollar. When you pay into an on-demand side event, you're automatically getting a money match. You both paid a dollar. If you win, you have the chance to get more. Yeah, exactly. So the first place getting five, the second place getting three, it's kind of like if you lose your round one, all you did was lose a money match. Exactly. And then you could just go back and do it again. Yeah, exactly, yeah. But the, it's threefold. So not only that, it's that whole way that if you grind side events and you scrub out of the main event, you have the ability to win $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, and then get your venue fee back, get your entry fee back. Start, yeah. you know, you're not probably going to get your plane and hotel and stuff back, but well, you have the yeah. ability to grind that value, mm -hmm. right? But as an additional incentive, we have the sponsors who bring in the prizes that are only available for the side events. So in order to make sure that people don't pot split at the end for first and second, um, when you win, you get five bucks, but also your winning bracket counts as a lottery ticket for the uh, sponsor provided prizes at the end. So okay. we have controller can task controllers, the Frostbite 2018 ones. You can only get those by winning side events. They're not for sale. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it gives, now, now it gives people incentive to have, like, kind of almost play. In the, so yeah, I there's, like it. there's only I seven of it. them in existence. Yep. So, like, that's the thing is, like, coming from Magic, there's rarity, whatever. Yeah. Oh, if yeah. Frostbite becomes, like, this huge story thing, like, how much is a Frostbite controller, chaos controller going to be in the future? You know what I mean? It becomes yeah. a collectible at that point if we get our brand to that legacy. But I want to make sure to, like, start those steps early to be able to make that kind of thing happen. No, on, on the controller, because we don't have it here, it doesn't <laughs> say, like, Frostbite 2018 mm -hmm. on it? Okay. You can still buy the Frostbite 2017 controller on Controller uh, Chaos's website. Okay. Uh, just kind of with Frostbite. But um, <laughs> right, We'll plug it in right there. <laughs> yeah. But uh, uh, that's because that, that was the deal for last year was uh, that they get to sell it um, because they weren't at the event. Mm -hmm. They They – were able to sell it on the website instead. Okay, okay. But they still had controllers out there for the side events. Okay. This year, I made sure that that's not included to make them more rare to give more people to go in. Oh, Our okay, other sponsor okay. is uh, Smash and Splash 4. And oh, I can't. This is a great event, man. They, well, uh -huh. well, 4 this year. Yeah. What they're doing is they're offering VIP passes for winners, which it's for you and a friend. So okay. you and the person of your choice get to go to Smash and Splash with a VIP, which includes, like, venue fee for entries, like a T-shirt, uh, a wristband, like a, a drawstring bag, overnight venue, priority seating, like, all this stuff for you and a friend. Value. Right? I love it. So, like I said, you get $5 for winning, but to make sure that we don't split 4-4 four, four and then just go again, mm -hmm. the winner specifically gets that bracket, and they get to hand that in as a lottery ticket to win one of these controllers or win one of these VIP packages. So not only are you able to grind value, but you're able to get things that are only available for winning the side events. And like to make sure that everything stays competitive even to the end. Cause that's something that even in magic, when you have these, like when you get to top two, like people would be like, want to oh, split? Yeah. I split all the time. Right, 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 yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. But I want to make sure that things stay competitive because you oh, want to yeah, have definitely. creating a tournament environment is very important to leveling up. So if you scrubbed out a tournament, you should be going to these side events. You should be grinding against people where there's things on the line. Yeah. And there's enough on the line that people want to do it, mm -hmm. but not enough on the line where like you feel like you lose and like it's feel bad. Yeah. If you lose a dollar here and there, that's fine. Is there, is there, is there multiple different entries that, or is so that there, all there's, there's, there's five different dollar. side events. Okay. The five are normal smash four singles, normal rivals of ether singles. Cause we have rivals of ether as well. Mm -hmm. um, then we have items on singles. We have random singles, which is you have to pick random characters and random stages, but the stages are the legal stages. So you're not going to get 75M or high rule or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then um, the last one is low tier singles because we have the low tier hero award. So it's normal singles, except you can only use the character yep. viable for the low tier hero award. So. Dude, very nice. So it, it, there's like multiple different layers to this event. And I think that we'll finally have the stage here to like show all the different layers and thought that like goes into the different things that we want to do here. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully we get to continue to grow, use this amazing venue and like go into the bigger spaces and like f more develop these concepts more and more and more because what inspired me to get to where I am now is actually big house five, which is the first major tournament I ever worked, which I guess we don't really count apex 2015. I was more of a volunteer, but yeah. um, like actually worked as a staff member was Big House 5, 
And that's the tournament that started the compendium. Okay. So what I saw was a tournament that out of nowhere had this very novel idea that came from another game, which was, I believe, Dota 2 had the compendium. I don't remember exactly which esport it was, but you, ha you have a g something from another game mm -hmm. localized to Smash, and what happened? Do you see a tournament without a compendium ever? Yeah, no, yeah. I see what you're saying. Big Files 5 was the trend center. So we started off in Frostbite 2018 with these novel ideas, trying to develop them over and over so we can be the trendsetter. Mm -hmm. Like I said, we brought over Japan in for last year, and then it just became year of Japan. We went from like two players on the PGR to 17. Jesus. And they were like everywhere, right? Yeah, yeah. So we set that trend. Now everyone's like, well, where's all the Japanese players? And it was just like, well, that was last year's trend, and we're going to set this trend now. And we're always at the next step. So I, I thought it was always cool that Big House 5 set the bar where they were like, this is where we are. Everybody else come to catch up. But then by the time Big House 6 came up, they've already finished that. And by the time everyone caught up, they already leveled up and they did the next thing, you know? Mm -hmm. So that was, that was kind of like the inspiration for this. And like this tournament series wouldn't exist without Robin Hart and Jungle Guy. Like, oh, yeah, great guys. Absolutely. Like it was not only were a lot of the ideas for the events – and like how we wanted to do, but like just like the mentoring and like TOing, like stuff from going to actually running a major yourself is completely different from like getting paid as staff to go to a major. Oh, yeah, yeah. Definitely. So it's like way more. And like without that experience, like we wouldn't be here today because actually the core staff for Frostbite is primarily consisting of the core staff who met for the first time at Big House 5. Mm -hmm. So like we met Josh at Big House 5. Myself, Ori, we have Adrian who does the uh, side events. Yep. Um, Unrivaled Tournaments actually was formed at Big House 5. Like, there's, there, like there's that is stuff, a huge man. point a of history. Of right, and like all of those people are still together. We're still really good friends, and we still put on these events every single year. So. All right, last question I always ask everybody, what's what's community mean, mean to you? What's, what does the word community or what yeah. does the Smash community no, mean? No, just like community, like, like the stuff that you deal with, like. Specifically, Smash or just in general? Let's, let's, let's stick with Smash because that's, so, that's what, what is that's the what Smash community yeah, mean to me? Because we're deep into that, so everything. Same here, man. Everything. Um, I don't enjoy playing Smash as much. I, I'm, not, I'm I'm in my thirties, man. Like, hey, man. I don't have like that's why here, I play bro. Magic. Same I don't here. have there's no tech skill. Yeah, you know, it's all up here. Yep. And the other thing is like if I'm learning something new in Smash or like any fighting game for that matter, I feel like I have to grind for hours to get the muscle memory mm -hmm. and like i used to be really good at marvel 3 but then i picked that game up the other day to try to play casually and i was just like i don't yeah. have that muscle memory anymore yeah. so i have to grind that all back you know what i'm saying like mm -hmm. it, it comes easier over time to do it but if i drop out of magic for a little bit i just read a couple articles watch a couple videos i'm already up to date yeah exactly you know like there's no actual tech skill it's all here you know mm -hmm. um so i respect that, that that's the game that i take like a little bit more seriously. I don't have time for it as much as I would like to, but oh, yeah. it's easy to keep up with because I'm already at that level. Mm -hmm. um, but like for Smash and stuff, taking it, you know, specifically seriously and like at a competitive level, I think that my time with that is long gone. Uh, I could possibly bring it back one day, but like it's, it's going to be hard. And then, um, but the reason why I'm here and I'm not doing Halo anymore and I'm not like hosting magic events and like I'm not doing any of that stuff is because... I like this community better than any community I've ever been a part of. Like I said, I've done shooters, I've done card yeah, games, here, I've man. done FGC, like which Smash is a part of, I guess. But technically, people could say it's Smash and FGC, right? Yeah. So I've done FGC, I've done all these different events, and I keep coming back to Smash because, like, just the people who are here, from the you know the famous commentators to the famous players to like just like the in general vibe, mm -hmm. is just better with this community. Yeah, like in my the, the reason why I transitioned from Magic to like Smash is because like when I first started, like just like seeing the hype. Of someone winning yeah Cause like really there, there isn't really no hype in magic because like you know you're sitting there you're watching two players play and then it's like you know the person's gonna win that they emotion have, they, yeah they have x amount of cards in hand like yeah, other than have, lightning yeah, helix yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah that's it or like bonfire off the top or right 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 it's very like, rare but like in video games man it's like every all the way all yep. up into the last second man that's why like yeah. just it's just it's way more hyper than magic man right. like just yeah. doesn't feel the same. No, magic is really, really, really annoying to spectate unless you're watching it to study it. Yeah, exactly. Can we yeah. can we get a, a sneak peek to 2019? What's going to happen? Uh, a, little, a little gem? Because this is not going to air until after. Uh, well, we're we're going to announce 2019 at the end of this minute. Can we get something? 
What, well, but if it's already announced, then like you'll have it already. Yeah, this is true. I never so about that. I, I literally the right, reason guys, we'll, why we'll, I was we'll late. Put the, we'll put the link in the video. Yeah, the, we'll the reason why I was late to this interview actually was because I was finalizing sales. Okay. We, we 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 walked over there to get the contract and like get the dates and like get everything settled. So Dude, I really hope like next year you guys get like like an obscene amount like two I'm like two thousand man like okay let's, here, I'll like, give you something go. I'll let's give you go. something I'll yeah. give you something. What's guaranteed is it's at this venue. Okay. What's guaranteed is the event space is going to be at least twice as big. Okay. What's guaranteed is we're adding a third game. I already know that is. I'll let you guess what it is. You're wrong, though. All right. Is it currently out? I can't answer that question. I'm, I'm just, like, going to let you. Yeah, we're, we're, I don't want to give you any hints. We already know it's DBZ. Like, we already, <laughs> already know it's DBZ. We already, we already know it's DBZ. You think it's DBZ? Yeah, Man, 100%. There's, a, there's some people out there who think that, like, the game's like a one-hit wonder. Like, it, it's, like, hot now, but after EVO, what if it slows down? Like, where's the momentum to keep it going? I don't think so. It, I mean, I don't think so either. I, I've yet to play it. I just don't have time. Like, right I, like I made predictions that Evo will have at least around ten thousand entrants for DBZ. I will say, guaranteed next year we will have one more main game. That's um, I, I I don't want to go out there and guarantee Rivals of Ether for a second year, but I will say that they are probably the best thing that happened this year. They've been a pleasure to work with. The community is very passionate. Mm -hmm. Love the game. It's hype, especially if you watch Genesis. Like, the game is really cool. Yeah, it is. So I would – um, and honestly, we're an ice bear. They have an ice bear. Like, there's no way I wasn't going to let that game, like, not be here. So yeah. uh, they were great. Uh, the developers are great. Want to have them back next year for sure. All right, definitely. Well, like, that's not a finalized deal, but I would like to finalize that. Yeah, definitely. Um, next is we're going to have a brand new third game. Nice. That we're not even gonna announce. That's so, fine. Oh, that's fine. Like we're not we're not even gonna announce it when we announce the dates. We're literally gonna announce the dates, the games that are guaranteed, and then sh silhouettes for the others. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I think that I think that what does it. Any last any last thoughts, man? You gotta say. Or? Come to frostbite. Come to frostbite. <laughs> I'll take a frostbite hoodie though. Oh, anyway. So thanks, guys, for uh, joining the episode. Peace out, guys. Yeah.